talking about the back like James used to thin back then. Those are way in the back. I, I'd have a songbook. We'd be singing that closing hymn and I'd be doing everything I could not to think about the words. <coughs> have thy own way, Lord, have thy own way. Or my being, have absolute sway. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about it. And I'd be putting fingerprints in that book. Why? Because I knew I needed Jesus. I knew I was a sinner. I knew that I still had, bond I had bondage in my life and I wasn't going to be set free until I came to faith in Christ. But I thought, I have to have this sin. I have to stay this way. I can't be any different. You know, I couldn't until I gave up and let Jesus be Jesus in me. And so, verse 21. For as by man came death, by man also comes the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Notice I underlined, I laid it all, because I wanted you to understand that this is not a universalism message. It says someday everybody's going to be saved. Look at verse 23. And each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. So who are the all? Christ, through Christ, all shall be made alive. It is those who belong to Him. Those who came to Christ. Those who came to receive the eternal life that He was offering. Not to receive something from Him, but to receive Him. For John chapter 1 tells us, but as many as received Him. To then gave the opportunity to become children of God. So, each in his own work, Christ the first fruit. Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, having paid for the sin of the world? Do you believe? If you don't, you won't be saved. Because there's no way that you can not believe the Savior and be saved. And then, who comes next? Those who belong to are you in Christ? Have you put your faith and trust in Him and Him alone to save you? Are you still thinking you're pretty good and you're going to make it somehow on your own? Verse 24. Then comes the end. When He delivers the kingdom to God and the Father. After destroying every rule, every authority, every power. Whatever thing that you might put your faith and trust in, Jesus is going to overtake all of it. He's going to be in, in authority over all of it. If it's in contradiction to him, he's going to destroy it. If it thinks that it's going to rule on its own, he's going to crush it. Every authority, every power, he must reign until he has put all of his enemies under his feet. There's nothing that you can hold up or believe or put your faith and trust in that Jesus is not going to overrule. Amen. And so whatever that is today, you would certainly want to set it aside. And then in verse 26, the last enemy. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put under subjection, Paul wanted them to understand that he wasn't talking about the Father putting himself under subjection to Christ. But the Father puts everything else in subjection under Christ. And so now, in verse 28, when all things are subjected then to Jesus, the Son himself will also be subjected to him, the Father, who put all things... So you see, you see this Trinitarian thing that's going here, where the Father gives Jesus authority. Jesus does this work to destroy the enemies. Jesus asked for the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God lives in the lives of believers, quickens them, brings salvation to them, delivers them to God, sealing them for His purpose. And so, because we're dealing with God as a triunity or a trinity, our one God in three distinct persons, there is always going to be this consistent authority between them. Because there's one mind, one goal, one purpose for God. 
The question is, are you going to be a part of that or not? As is the call of the There's a song that we sing because he lives. But because he lives, who is this he? First Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. For there's one God, and there's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Who is going to be your mediator on judgment? If you put your faith and trust in Jesus. He will. See, Christ Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all. Remember, those who believe, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Jesus has done this for you. Have you received it? Have you received him? Have you responded to what he has provided? Well, I'm going to go a different route. Peter, the day of Pentecost, Preaching this message in Acts chapter 4 makes this statement. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. In 2 Corinthians 5, in verse 20, some would say, well, maybe Jesus was just a good man. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. I put my faith and trust in God through his Passover lamb, Jesus, his very son. And that Jesus was not a man. He never sinned. There are some in making their own false Christ say that Jesus was once like me and someday I'll be like him. And what they mean by that is Jesus used to be a sinful man. He earned his way to becoming the Son of God. I will also someday be God of my own planet. And that whole, whole thing, and you go, no, nobody believes that. And I'm tell you, millions of people around the world believe that. Some are in that group and they don't even know that truth because nobody's let them in on it. But there's only one who has known no sin. And that's Jesus. Yeah. So the scripture says, for our sin, verse 21, for our sin, he, the Father, made him, Jesus, to be sin. When he was on the cross, he bore the sin of the world so that people who would choose to respond to the gospel when called could be forgiven of those sins no matter what those sins were and could be changed by him. May him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He said there's no way. There's no way I'll let to be the righteousness of God. You're right. You can't do it. Only Jesus can. And you won't see that completely fulfilled in your lifetime because you and I will still struggle with the flesh. We will win victories. And as we are more obedient and as we love God more and we serve God more and we walk in His holiness, we'll see more and more victory in that area in our life. But a day will come we will stand before the Lord and we will be moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Heavenly Father, today we come to you thanking you for that grace. That promise that you made for those who receive your good news, the gospel, that Jesus will save us. Lord, I, I want to help somebody who's here today. That you're tugging at their heart and you're calling them and they don't know what to say right now. They would just think your direction and, and know that you're smart enough to know that they're thinking toward you. And they would say, Father in heaven, thank 
thank you for Jesus. Jesus, I receive you. I believe and trust in you as my way for heaven and for this life. Come in, change me, make me like yourself. I want to trust you and you alone. I acknowledge I'm sorry and I need your forgiveness. Thank you for taking my sin and giving me your righteousness. Now, Lord, give me the courage. Now that I have received it, follow you publicly in life and in baptism. I pray in your name. Now Lord, for those of us who have been walking with you, you've saved us and we're out preaching this message and we know it's true. Lord, sometimes we're fearful because the world is so full of deception. We think people are going to reject us. Lord, help us to speak truth so that if no other reason, people would know the sacrifice of your love, your willingness, and what you would do to bring salvation to them if they will only believe. You're calling someone to be a part of this church family. Lord, let them do that. If you're calling someone to ministry, help them to understand. Whatever it is that we're is controlling our life that we're putting ahead of you. Lord, help us to confess it and to give it over to you that we might walk in the freedom you've given us in Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. We're going to have an invitation. And you know what they tell me? On Easter Sunday, nobody will ever respond because there's too many people there and maybe somebody ready to receive Christ and there's just no way that we're going to come in front of all those people. I want you to know something. Judgment Day is going to be a bigger event than this. Right? So why not take care of what you know you need to do in the eyes of God today so that on Judgment Day you don't have that to be concerned as we stand you come. I'll meet you here. Oh, breath of God, come fill this place. Revive our hearts to know your grace. And from our slumber make us rise that we may
as well. So let's uh, go Lord in prayer as we pray uh, for this time. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this time that we have to uh, worship you. Uh, we thank you for your resurrection, your son's resurrection, his death, burial, resurrection. That, that it brings new life, as that last song says, as Brother David preached on this morning. Father, we thank you for who you are, for all that you do. Especially thank you for Jesus Christ, for his salvation. The salvation that he brings in us, Lord. Father, we pray for, for those here in this, in this audience that have not uh, trusted in your son for salvation. They want to do so today. I pray for all this in Jesus' name. Amen.